Hey guys, Hardware Hound here. So I got a comment on my ASRock review from Ivan. Ivan, I'm sorry if I butcher this last name, but I'm gonna say Jovanovic. And he was asking me what I thought about the upcoming Ryzen release that's coming the second quarter of this year, um, the Zen Plus. I wanted to know what I was hoping for, what I was gonna think about it, and I thought, hmm, that is a great idea. So here I am, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go through it and we're gonna talk about, you know, there's gonna be three main things. I wanna talk about what we should expect because I do think there's some clear things we should expect from Zen Plus. Then I wanna talk about what we can hope for but not necessarily expect them to do. Then I think we should talk a little bit about what we should completely dismiss. Rumors or expectations are just so far above what we should expect that we should just completely dismiss it if anybody tells us otherwise. And I also have my cheat sheets because there's a lot of info here and, well, it'll help me to have cheat sheets. So first off, let's talk about some of this dismissing of rumors. For instance, one came out, and I'm glad I missed this one, but one came out about a 12-core 5.1 gigahertz chip that, you know, apparently was only going to be $329. That's something to completely dismiss. I mean, even if we want to believe 12 cores at 5 gigahertz, and that's still too much of a stretch, $329 is a very clear, oh, heck no. They would definitely price that at a more competitive rate and higher than that because of the level of performance. So we want to just dis dismiss things that come out like that before we even really read it because it's not worth the time. So let's go ahead and talk about Ryzen 2, as a lot of sites are calling it. Now, I'm confident AMD is not going to use Ryzen 2, Ryzen 2 at this moment in time. Two reasons for that. One, I can't find anything official from AMD that uses that term. Reason two, it makes sense. They've already got Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7. If they t call this refresh Ryzen 2, where are they going to go next year when they get their third iteration? So AMD has been calling it Zen Plus. And then next year when they, when they do a new architecture overhaul and they um, do the 7NM manufacturing process, they're going to call that Zen 2. So for the purpose of this video, we are talking about Zen Plus. That is the processors that are going to be refreshes of the current Zen, regular Zen processors, that have already released. So we're going to see those supposedly the second quarter of this year. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about specs and let's talk about what we need to expect here. For starters, I think we need to expect that a lot of things are going to be identical. So for instance, our core counts, our cache sizes, and even the socket compatibility, those are all going to be identical. Don't expect anything to be changed on any level. And even if people are saying, well, you know, Zen Plus might have a 10 core chip or something. No, I don't even think that's something reasonable to hope for. This is basically a refresh of Zen to kind of optimize it and make it more what they hoped it. I think what AMD hoped Zen was originally going, going to be. So don't expect them to change anything on that. Plus the manufacturing process change from 14 to 12 is not big enough to justify adding more cores and having more space to play around with. So I think we can just completely expect those to be the same and anything that tells us otherwise is something to be dismissed. What I think we can expect though to change is the frequency to, to, to increase. So WCCF actually had an article with a leaked spec on a processor, a Ryzen 5 2600, that had about a 200 megahertz boost over the Ryzen 5 1600. I think that, I think that leak is enough to give us a clear expectation of where Zen Plus is gonna end up. Now that said, I don't think it's unreasonable to still hope for maybe a three to 400 megahertz boost. If AMD gets to optimizing the final stages and finds out that they've got some, some wiggle room that they can push more out of those chips, we may see even higher boosted clock speeds than, than even just the 200 megahertz. But I wouldn't totally expect that. 
If you see anybody saying that there's gonna be Zen Plus chips exceeding 4,500 megahertz though on, on factory, I would say dismiss that. I don't think a refresh of this architecture is gonna see that huge of a change. So, of course, we have that 12NM process that I mentioned. Once again, completely expected. AMD has said as much. To even hope for anything different than that is kind of pointless. We can dismiss any rumor that would say otherwise. The only thing we should expect to use a new manufacturing process is Zen 2 next year, which is going to be jumping to a 7NM manufacturing process. All right, let's talk about performance now. I think it is fair to expect at least a 10% performance, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, actually AMD had said unofficially to somebody who was interviewing them at CES that that's what they, they would unofficially say to expect. So we have that right away. So bam, expect it. The other reason why we should expect is because why would you even bother doing a refresh, refresh for less than 10%? That's just a waste of materials and it's a waste of consumers' money. And AMD hasn't shown that they're doing that as much in recent years. So I think that we can at least expect 10% and even up to 15% within reason. I think if we're going to start looking past 15 and into the 20% range, that might be something reasonable to hope for. Because a combination of the boosted frequencies on top of maybe just a little bit of optimizing of the architecture could be enough to get us some reasonable performance boost. But once we start getting anything above 20%, 25, 30, I think we need to just kind of dismiss that. If there's a rumor out there saying, oh my gosh, Ryzen Zen Plus, Zen or Ryzen 2, you know, because a lot of people like that term, is got 25% performance increase, just, just dismiss it. If they do, great, pleasantly surprised but I don't expect that. Now overclocking is a question that comes up a lot. And so I think we need to just talk about the expectation and put it where it, it kind of needs to be. I think we should expect Zen Plus to overclock about the same as Zen. And by that I mean that we're gonna see the same XFR frequency the top range of the XFR frequency kind of being the limit of what the chip is going to overclock to. So even though that should be about 200, maybe a little more megahertz than what Zen was, I don't want to think that Zen Plus is going to do better. I think a lot that's going to have to do with just the architecture of Zen. But on the flip side, it is okay, I think, to hope for around 100, 200% megahertz boost above XFR frequencies this time. With the right optimization of the architecture, it might give us a little more. But if you've got people coming out and saying, hey, Zen overclocked on air over five gigahertz, it just dismiss that. I've seen those rumors so many times and you know, most of the time they're just completely, completely bogus. So don't expect that and just dismiss that as a rumor that's not worth paying attention to. Power ratings are probably not a big deal to a lot of people, but in case that's something you're thinking about, I would say expect the TDP ratings to be the same. You might see a little fluctuation up or down by maybe five watts, but don't expect any drastic change. It's a refresh. Whatever power savings the 12NM fat manufacturing process is gonna give AMD, they're probably gonna eat up with more performance and boosting the clock speeds. So we might see a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but I wouldn't expect any more than maybe five watts. If anybody's telling you a 2800X or whatever the equivalent is, is got a 65 watt TDP, I would say dismiss that. That's probably another one of those bogus rumors. Okay, now let's talk about the price. Zen Plus, I would say we should completely expect to release at the same price as Zen did when it first launched. And I think the biggest indication of that is the fact that AMD at CES officially price slashed all of their Zen counterparts. That sounds like a, a, just a perfect move to prepare for Zen Plus. And the 1800X is now at $350. So the idea that any of, the top, any of those top two chips are gonna be any less than that is kind of absurd. I would say that we could maybe hope 
for a slight bit of wiggle room with like the equivalence of a 2800X or a 2700X. Maybe instead of $500, a 2800X will release at 450. But I think that's just kind of in the hope territory. It'd be more, more realistic if it was back to the 500 price. Anybody telling you lower than $350 or same price as at current Zen, I dismiss those rumors. I just would seriously doubt that. Be pleasantly surprised if I'm wrong. Okay guys, there's gonna be a quick little blip in the camera because even though I'll be able to edit this out, I need to pause my recording, restart it, so I can talk about the chipset. Okay, so what can we expect with X470? Well, the number one and biggest thing I think we can expect is we're gonna see some much higher quality boards this time. In fact, I was a little disappointed that X370 didn't give us some higher options because I was really looking forward to a Gaming 7 version from Oris because the Gaming 5 is just a little bit weaker on the power delivery. Um, but no, Gigabyte's already shown us an Oris Gaming 7 motherboard at CES, so we know that there is going to be higher quality motherboards. In fact, I think we can expect some really high-end boards from the likes of companies like Gigabyte, ASRock, and even MSI. I think they're going to push those limits to the upper end. I think with Asus, we can expect them to have higher-end boards, but I would expect that their highest of high-end boards are still going to be relegated to the Intel side only. I don't think they're going to try to match Ryzen yet to Intel in those kind of levels. Now, that said, I think that's something to hope for because it might be might be possible that it's worth it to Asus to put in a really top high-end board that has comparative features to the to, to the best of the best of Intel. But I just think that would be more on a hope level. Um, there's really not a lot in the motherboard department that we can dismiss unless somehow somebody's telling you, oh my gosh, here's this X470 board that's way better than any board ever. Yeah, okay, probably not gonna happen. So yeah, the X470 chipset, we're probably gonna get a lot better boards. Um, we, are, we should definitely expect better memory support and better memory overclocking and higher memory frequencies. I think we should not only expect that, but we should expect that to be coming fairly close to what Intel boards can handle. Not only has AMD said that, that as much, and they're gonna focus, and they're focused in on that, and they, have, they, are, they were arranging memory placement, which I have no doubt is something to do with helping with memory frequency and stuff. But motherboards putting higher end features is gonna help with that inadvertently anyway. So we can totally expect that. I think we can hope for levels comparative to Intel, but I just don't think it's gonna be quite the level that Intel boards can still handle with the highest of high memory frequencies and overclocking. Um, if anybody says that AMD overclocks memory better as a leak ahead of time than Intel boards and they've got the highest frequencies, I would think that's a rumor to dismiss, have to see it to really believe that one. But I do think we're gonna be very comparative and for the average user, there isn't gonna be any difference because a lot of average builders out there are probably just using XMP profiles and memory that you know is a lot more affordable. So I think we can definitely expect that. One of the big questions that comes up, CPU overclocking. And guys, as much as I hate to say it, I think we should just say that expect X470 to not really give you any kind of boost over X370. I really am convinced in my experience and years with this that overclocking is, is really based on the chip and the architecture. And I've never seen a motherboard do something that just gives you crazy amounts extra frequency. I've seen motherboards help a little bit with temperatures, but it just seems like the chip really depends on, on the architecture and how well it's designed to overclock. So for those who have a Ryzen 1800X and they're hoping to get hot, like boosting their frequencies a decent amount above 4,000 megahertz as an overclock, don't expect X470 to do that for you. I, there's, a, there's a level where there's no amount of extra VRM or anything that's gonna do it. Yeah, if you have a cheap $50 motherboard, then you might get that huge boost. But if you already have a nice X370 board, don't expect an X470 to solve that problem. You'd probably end up disappointed. I think we can hope for that, but don't hope for a massive amount of difference. Maybe hope for like 100 megahertz, 200 tops over what an X370 board can do. 
So most of our hope is going to be relying on Zen Plus being a better overclocker. That said, if Zen Plus is, and you've got a good X370 board, like well, I'm a really big fan of that ASRAC Tai Chi for at least daily use, um, I think you could put a, a Ryzen Zen Plus in there and get some more frequency out of it. So, yeah. I think that about covers it. We've got, I'm looking at my notes here and I'm thinking that's about all we can really talk about. So the X470 chipset, we're going to probably have the same PCI lanes. I was hoping for 16 by 16 Crossfire X and SLI support, but I saw the back of that uh, or uh, Gaming 7 board from Gigabyte and I can tell we're still going to have a 16 by 8 Crossfire SLI support. So Pat, uh, prior from AMD did mention that there is a big change that's coming to the X470 chipset, but your guess is as good as mine. Put it in the comments below. Let me know what you hope or think or have a good idea of what you might think is going to be going on there. And you guys can kind of discuss that one among yourselves. So there we go, guys. I think that's what we can expect from Zen Plus. The best and biggest news, cross compatibility. Yep. Your Zen Plus chips are going to get BIOS updates so that they will work on your X370 motherboards and your X470 motherboards are still going to be backwards compatible to your previous generation Zen chips. We've been waiting years for that. AMD is finally delivering it. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you think of this video. I hope this is helpful. Hope it sets some expectations um, that aren't too terribly high and give us something to look forward to. Like and subscribe if you want to, and I will catch you later.